From the rising of the sun to the setting, my name shall be great among the nations. And in every place, incense shall be offered to my name. And a pure offering, my name shall be great among the nations, says the Lord of hosts. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Herb, could you please lead us in the confession of sin? Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us that we may delight in your will, walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you. Forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness. And by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Sue, if you could help with the next part. Lord, open our lips. And our mouth shall proclaim your praise. The Lord has shown forth his glory. Come, let us adore him. Sue, if you could please pray Psalm 100. Be joyful in the Lord, all you lands. Serve the Lord with gladness and come before his presence with a song. Know this, the Lord himself is God. He himself has made us and we are his. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. Enter his gates with thanksgiving. Go into his courts with praise. Give thanks to him and call upon his name. For the Lord is good, his mercy is everlasting and his faithfulness shall endure from age to age. Today's psalm is Psalm number 62. For God alone, my soul in silence waits. Truly, my hope is in him. He alone is my rock and my salvation. My stronghold, so that I shall not be shaken. In God is my safety and my honor. God is my strong rock and my refuge. Put your trust in him always, O people. Pour out your hearts before him, for God is our refuge. These of high degree are but a fleeting breath. Even though even those of low estate cannot be trusted. On the scales they are lighter than a breath. All of them together. Put no trust in extortion. In robbery take no empty pride. Though wealth increase, Set not your heart upon it. God has spoken once, twice I have heard it. The that power, power belongs to God. That power belongs to God. Steadfast love is yours, O Lord. For you repay everyone according to his deeds. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. The first reading is from Jonah. The word of the Lord came to Jonah a second time, saying, Get up, go to Nivev, that great city, and proclaim it to, to its message that I tell you. So Jonah set out and went to Nineveh, according to the word of our Lord. Now Nineveh was an exceedingly large city, a three days walk across Jonah began to go into the city, going a day's walk, and he cried out, 40 days more, and Nineveh shall be overthrown. All the people of Nineveh believed God. They proclaimed a fast, and everyone, great and small, put on sackcloth. When God saw what they did, how they turned from their evil ways, God changed his mind about the calamity that he had said he would bring upon them, and he did not do it. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. Gretchen, could you please lead us in the song of the redeemed? O ruler of the universe, Lord God, great deeds are they that you have done, surpassing human understanding. Your ways are ways of righteousness and truth, O king of all the ages. Who can fail to do you homage, Lord, and sing the praises of your name? For you only are the Holy One. All nations will draw near and fall down before you because your just and holy works have been revealed. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. 
The epistle is taken from 1 Corinthians. I mean, brothers and sisters, the appointed time has grown short. From now on, let even those who have wives be as though they had none, and those who mourn as though they were not mourning, and those who rejoice as though they were not rejoicing, and those who buy as though they had no possessions, and those who deal with the world as though they had no dealings with it. For the present form of this world is passing away. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. A reading from the Gospel according to Mark. Now after John was arrested, Jesus came to Galilee, proclaiming the good news of God and saying, The time is fulfilled, and the kingdom of God has come near. Repent and believe in the good news. As Jesus passed along the Sea of Galilee, he saw Simon and his brother Andrew casting a net into the sea, for they were fishermen. And Jesus said to them, Follow me, and I will make you fish for people. And immediately they left their nets and followed him. As he went a little farther, he saw James, son of Zebedee, and his brother John, who were in their boat mending the nets. Immediately he called them, and they left their father Zebedee in the boat with the hired men and followed him. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Good morning, everyone, on this annual meeting Sunday. The prayer that we'll pray in a few moments for this morning, for the day, collects the themes in the scripture readings we've just heard. God requests that a reluctant Jonah travel to the city of Nineveh and proclaim that those people need to change their evil ways. Jesus, seeing Simon and his brother Andrew casting a net into the sea, says to them, follow me and I will make you fish for people. And we, reflecting on these biblical passages, ask God, in the words of the colic for the day, to give us grace to answer readily the call of our Savior, Jesus Christ, and proclaim to all people the good news of his salvation. This morning's psalm reminds us we need to quiet down and listen in order to discern the call. My soul in silence waits. And the Apostle Paul, writing to the church in Corinth, points out to the people who were trying to be faithful that the times are changing. Our former ways of doing things are passing away and will not fit the new circumstances that are coming up. Hearing all this, we can easily understand why Jonah, reluctant to answer the call, hears the hubbub and in effect snaps back, good God, what now? <clears throat> and yes, when your priest begins his annual report with such a preamble, you too might be feeling Jonah's sentiment. What now? What does our vicar have up his sleeve for us in 2024? In his first year with us, he listened to our stories about all souls. But then last year, he turned it around. Did Father Tom trick us? Turning our stories into the stuff of parish goals and agenda about renewal and growth. We were just talking, and then it turned into a full-fledged parish plan with five goals. Five goals? We're just a small congregation. Five times five is our Sunday average attendance. And with 25 to 30 people as the sum total of our regular membership, what can All Souls Church accomplish? Well, on the one hand, as we talk about our parish life and mission this morning at our annual meeting, I think we would agree that All Souls accomplishes a fair bit of what God is calling us to be and do. But on the other hand, I hear you about a big plan with a small group. So I want to clearly say the following. The power of the Holy Spirit does not swoop down upon us in grand world-changing ways be it in social action blueprints or expansive visions of the church's mission. But in the yet small determinations each of us make to get through the day or night in a way that is not limiting oneself or belittling others. 
we grow slowly. The incarnation of Jesus Christ, our becoming more and more the people of the body of Christ, as God intends, is a fleshing out that takes time. So I would like to take time in the remainder of my report to share bits of my story or self-understanding with you. Ever since I can remember, and I mean toddlerhood in kindergarten, I have understood the world theologically. Sidebar, someday ask me to preach about waking dreams or Aunt Alice. God has always figured in everything for me. And as I began to grow and see myself situated in the world, you know, first and second grade, I recognized myself as a teacher. That stayed with me, and it became the defining facet of my education and priesthood. And it's only this past week that I found a prayer written by St. Thomas Aquinas. Here it is. Grant me, I beseech thee, O merciful God, prudently to study, rightly to understand, and perfectly to fulfill that which is well-pleasing to thee, to the praise and glory of thy name. Amen. So I am claiming those words as the prayer of my vocation. And that's two years after my retirement, yet here I am with you, hardly retired. There's another prayer I came across a good 50 years ago as I was approaching college graduation. If the Aquinas prayer is my teacher prayer, then this other prayer by St. Augustine of Hippo, I right away consider to be a good student prayer, a prayer for the whole student body. In other words, everyone in a parish community. The prayer embodies St. Augustine's threefold quest and has always struck me as a living dynamic template for what it means to be the church. Dear God, help me to know the mind of Christ, pray the prayer of Christ, and do the deeds of Christ. So, if five goals seems top heavy, then how about this one prayer with its three in one fossa? It will still take a lifetime, but it is supposed to. That's what St. Thomas Aquinas earlier means by perfectly fulfilling that which is well pleasing to God. Not fulfilling God's will perfectly, but rather sticking to it in a way that all our days are seeking to perfect the ways in which we listen for God's call and then respond. The third little ditty I hold on to is not a prayer, but a small bit of reflection on the definition of leadership. It is at the heart of how I see my responsibility as a parish priest. It is Martin Luther King Jr.'s definition of leadership. A leader encourages people to raise questions that are not being asked, and then for the people to respond in ways that have not been considered before. I might have paraphrased a little, but that's King's take on moving people. And that has been with me since my sophomore year in college. Another sidebar, Martin Luther King Jr. is one of the four reasons I became a priest. So there you have it, my self-understanding and identity as a priest who teaches, the prayer for the faith community on its pilgrimage to Christ, and my understanding not only of leadership of the community, but the church as leader in the world. I will close with just one more phrase. It is the answer to the question why we do all this. They are words that belong to Abraham Joshua Heschel, a Polish-American rabbi, theologian, teacher, and writer of the mid-20th century. Why do we do all this? Because to be human is to assist the divine. Amen. Jolie, if you could please turn on your mic and lead us with the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, 
the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered on the Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, everlasting. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray in the words Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but to deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Herb, if you could please lead to help with the suffrages. <clears throat> Show us your mercy, O Lord. And grant us your salvation. Clothe your ministers with righteousness. Let your people sing with joy. Give peace, O Lord, in all the world. For only in you can we live in safety. Lord, keep this nation under your care. And guide us in the way of justice and truth. Let your way be known upon earth. Your saving health upon all nations. Let not the needy, O Lord, be forgotten, nor the hope of the poor be taken away. Create in us clean hearts, O God, and sustain us with your Holy Spirit. Let, it, let us pray. Give us grace, O Lord, to answer readily the call of our Savior, Jesus Christ, and proclaim to all people the good news of his salvation that we and the whole world may receive the glory of his marvelous works, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Let us pray for the sick and suffering. Heavenly Father, giver of life and health, comfort and relieve your sick servants. We pray especially today for Bishop Michael Curry, Les Kenny, Stephanie Sebon, Paul Hoffman, Josephine Orlando, Kathy Clark, Anita Alexander, Ezekiel Almash, Victoria Ferry, Parker Monez, Mark Gaeta, Ashley Hudson and Emerson Mize Gaeta, Helen Walsh, Helen Ha, Conchetta Pumalisi, Richard C. Almash, Anna Kerr Good, April Kerr Valentine, other others we pray for today. And Kerr. McPherson's, Tammy and her family. Lord, that we ask that we give your power of healing to those that minister to their needs, that they may be strengthened in their weakness and have confidence in your loving care <clears throat> through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. As we pray for the uh, prayer for mission today, we pray for Michael, our presiding bishop, Lawrence, our bishop, for all the bishops and other ministers, including our own vicar, Tom. We pray under the Anglican cycle of prayer for the Diocese of Apoko in Nigeria. Um, also, during this week of prayer for Christian unity, we pray for the closer relationships between all denominations worldwide and for the local churches in our three village community. And we give thanks for our ecumenical projects, including our morning prayer community and our um, rosary community as well. Almighty and everlasting God, by whose spirit the whole body of your faithful people is governed and sanctified, receive our supplications and prayers which we offer before you for all members of your holy church, that in their vocation and ministry, they may truly and devoutly serve you through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. We also pray for those who have died, especially for Joan Mason, the mother of uh, Tammy uh, McPherson, who passed away uh, Friday evening. Are there other intentions and prayers that we have for today? We, uh, on this day of our annual meeting, we give thanks to all the ministries of All Souls Church, and we ask for the Holy Spirit's guidance uh, as we hold our annual meeting today. Gretchen, could you lead us in the general thanksgiving, please? Almighty God, Father of all mercies, 
We, your unworthy servants, give you humble thanks for all your goodness and loving kindness to us and to all whom you have made. We bless you for our creation, preservation, and all the blessings of this life, but above all, for your immeasurable love in the redemption of the world by our Lord Jesus Christ, for the means of grace and for the hope of glory. And we pray, give us such an awareness of your mercies that with truly thankful hearts, we may show forth your praise, not only with our lips, but in our lives, by giving up ourselves to your service and by walking before you in holiness and righteousness all our days. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be honor and glory throughout all ages. Amen. Almighty God, you have given us grace at this time with one accord to make our common supplication to you. And you have promised through your well-beloved son that when two or three are gathered together in his name, you will be in the midst of them. Fulfill now, our Lord, our desires and petitions that may be best for us, granting us in this world knowledge of your truth and in the age to come, life everlasting. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all evermore. Amen.